Well, I'm Jay Abraham, and I'm sitting across from the Sande Neda, the voice, the face, the force behind Open Circles Academy, and we're sitting in a very lovely setting in Amsterdam, and I flew here to the Netherlands because I was intrigued, curious, and impressed with reports I'd received from someone who was transforming the segment of the business community that I have a very high regard for, service providers, uh, solopreneurs who are into services, IT consultants, life coaches, uh, uh, consultants, trainers. Uh, the stories I was hearing were quite profound and I wanted to know a lot about it, so I'm here. And I've spent the last couple of days observing, talking to actual successful students, learning about the methodology, looking at uh, the whole concept, and I'm impressed. And I thought today we'd talk a little bit so that I could be the advocate of someone who didn't really know a lot, didn't understand, and maybe put in perspective what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, and why what you are doing has produced such rather impressive results for the people who embrace it, and maybe help people watching do a little of their own self-reality check, and we'll talk about reality checks later, but let's start at the very beginning. You have a very vibrant, a very dynamic, a very unique organization that you drive literally on stage and off that is transforming lives every day of every week of every month in many ways here in the Netherlands. And I'm curious how that came about. In the beginning, you were doing something and something must have impacted you that said there's a market that needs attention. You want to go back to the beginning? In the beginning. So before the beginning, in my past lives, I was a software uh, programmer, basically. Okay. I had my own software company back in Israel for eight years, very, very successful company. At least it was very successful for eight years until it fell down okay. to the ground. And um, during those eight years, I learned a lot about entrepreneurship. I learned a, learned a lot about business. I was actually parallel to the times that I was uh, working or running this software company, I was already teaching entrepreneurship, not because I wanted it, I was never considered myself a teacher, but I was uh, nominated for the youngest, uh, best entrepreneur of the year, and uh, as a result of that, I got a lot of speaking engagement, and people wanted to know how we're doing it, and how I started my business at the age of 18, mm -hmm. how, it was, how it became such a success in such a short time. Uh, so I, I, I learned to actually really, really fall in love with, with entrepreneurs, uh, small entrepreneurs, basically. And, uh, and I loved to support them during the, that period. But when the company broke down, when, when, when the company went bankrupt actually, then uh, I didn't know what to do anymore. I didn't want to do anything with business, marketing, or software, or computers, anything. Started to travel the world, and at one point I found he myself here in Amsterdam. And uh, actually it started very simply. I needed to make some money, because otherwise I wouldn't eat. Sure. And I Been was there. trying to figure out what should I do. And I, I didn't know anybody, I didn't know the language, I didn't know, I, I didn't know what I want to do, I knew that I don't want to do marketing or anything, or computers. So I basically I started to teach people uh, what I call the elements of success and the elements of failure, because I knew both. And I was very successful failing, which is... Uh, <laughs> so I, I, love I, the I, I, I managed to be very successful uh, very fast also yes. in that. So I learned both on what, 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 brought me to, what brought me success, but also what mistakes I did uh, that I shouldn't do anymore. And I started teaching that in small groups for um, about 12 people at a time, 15 people at a time, and somehow something resonates uh, with a lot of people. So over the last 18 years, we worked with over 100,000 uh, people just here in Holland. Uh, Which is quite profound, because that's, uh, you, you've specialized and concentrated mostly on service providers and mostly on solopreneurs. And uh, it's quite a phenomenal, but I think what is even more interesting, and I'm going to be your advocate and also the, the, the viewer's advocate, what I know that they don't is that you haven't spent probably much more than a few pennies on advertising or marketing to your great credit and, uh, and distinction. Almost everyone who comes into the room to embrace what you're doing has been referred 
by someone else whose life has been enhanced That's or true. whose business has been impacted. Is that not true? It's absolutely true. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah, well, actually, that's how we started. We start, I started with, actually, I, uh, the, the, it's, it's kind of interesting. The first workshop I ever did, the first seminar I ever did, uh, I knew six people in Holland. That's it, six people. And I told them, I'm starting a new profession. You know, I'm starting a new profession. I'm starting this training company, me and me, basically, as a solopreneur. And that's why I have this affinity to solopreneurs, because I was like that for so many years. It's just now that we became a bigger company in the last few years. But I started and I told those people, listen, I'm doing this, uh, this training, it's going to cost you and you have to pay. Th those were all friends or people that I just met here. I said, you all have to pay and you have to fill up the car and bring it. So we had 42 people in the first training. And I took the names, I used the list, that was my first list, that was 18 years ago. And, um, and those people brought the next people, brought the next people, brought the next people. Over the last 18 years, over 100,000 people were filling up rooms right now. Every couple of months with 1,500 to 1,500 people. It's a great testament. It's a great all, testament. Of them, all of them from referrals. And, and, and that's incredible. One of the things, we've had a lot of discussion this week, so I'm going to distill and, and, um, and repeat what I think is a, a profound set of realities. So first reality that I think is that you've created very accelerated methodology, both in the content and in the delivery process, that helps a solo entrepreneur who really usually got into it, didn't really have a good sense of strategy or doesn't understand strategy, doesn't understand the real elements of how you build and grow a business, build and grow clients, buyers, build and grow an organization, get yourself out of the way of the problem. Most small single entrepreneurs are just getting by every day and they're, they're, they're beleaguered and they're stressed out and you and I, and I have great empathy for them too but you've created this whole process to liberate and to to give them a business model that works harder and harder for them than they work for it and that creates a future for them and I think it's very cool let's talk a little bit about the the uh, the belief system that you have because I know you've got uh, a basic uh, sort of a fast-tracked, accelerated, short-course primer that you very much try to get everyone to experience to get a sense of what they're not doing, a sense of what is possible, a sense of why their business may be not delivering the results they want, a sense of where and why they're stuck. And it's very, very, uh, I want to say cathartic, but it's also very... Uh, it's very liberating because it helps people finally understand what's wrong with their thinking strategy and how to shift it very quickly. I, th I think that's right, isn't it? That's correct. Okay, so let's talk about, because you do something very few people, I think, in Holland probably do, and you do it with a great intention, and I know it's, it's very successful. You have an attitude that you don't want to wait for money to change hands for you to be able to contribute and make a difference to the solo entrepreneur. So you say, okay, fine, we'll invite you, we'll pay, and we'll provide an extraordinary two-day short course understanding of how to make your business a lot better, how to make your career a lot more profitable, how to make the future that you've committed yourself to enormously more fulfilling. We will show you, we will prove it, we will give you activities you can validate in your mind, we'll give you insights, you can take right home and apply the minute you go back and we will underwrite it all and we're doing it because we know if we do and you're the right person, you will either see clearly or you will go and validate it and you will want ultimately to come and avail yourself of our additional program so it'll come back multiplied. So you're really investing in the solo entrepreneur because you believe they're a good investment, and you've seen over 18 years that if you invest generously in them, a lot of them will come back and reinvest generously back in you, and they've stayed for years and years, and it's been very joyous. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth, but I think that's true. Yeah. So let's talk about, because you've got an incredible number of elements you share in your, in, in your primer, in your two-day business boot camp, and then you've got some outrageously powerful, more advanced elements, distinctions, strategies, and components you teach in, your, in, in your suite of other 
uh, very impressive trainings. Let's talk about both for a minute. So let's talk about in the beginning, when you are the benefactor. I'm a struggling solopreneur. I don't know what I'm doing. I've been working at it for years, and I think the average person you're, you're dealing with has been in it for a couple of years. They're flatlining or they're going down. They don't know what to do. Even if they're making a living, they're exhausted. They're living deal to deal. They're the salesperson. They're the office manager. They're the bookkeeper. They're the, they're the accounts payable, receivable. They're the provider. It's a nightmare. So it's, you, the first thing is stop. Then what do you what do you do? Actually, the people that we're working with, the, those solopreneurs, but they are not only solopreneurs. Those are small companies, people with five, six employees. Sometimes some people that are making up to a million euros. But also, we have a lot of the struggling, and they're all kind of stuck. And the main thing is with the people that we're working, and those are mainly the service providers. If we're talking about the the ICTers, if we're talking about the consultants, the coaches, the trainers, the the artists, the the, the designers, etc. So. You were, you were mentioning that they are doing everything in their business, and that's true. I mean, that's the main, you know, stuckness that they are, but what we always try to remember is that they are all experts. I mean, they are so good in what they're doing, and for me, it's, it tears my heart to see that they're actually spending maybe 20% of the time, or can spend 20% of the time, actually using this expertise and sharing this expertise with yeah. the rest of the world and giving it to, to who deserves it, and the rest of the time, they need to do stuff that they're not necessarily good at. They never learned how to do that. They're not good at that in, uh, in a certain way, but they also don't like it. So it's kind of a, a you know, life of, a, of, of struggle that, that I've been there. I've been there, bought a t-shirt, didn't like it. At one point, <laughs> I wanted out of it. And it took me time, you know, it took me time and it took me a lot of effort and learning and money to invest it and everything. But I found a way that can help. And basically the idea is that to teach them the basic skills, what they need in order to become more successful in business and the skills that they don't need to learn, to teach them how to outsource, delegate, find other people that can do that or not do them at all. And uh, what, what we did for years is what, that we taught the basic, um, or, yeah, the basic marketing or business skills. We were, taught, we were teaching that those in the advanced training, what we call today the advanced, but at that time it wasn't advanced, it was th those were the trainings we had. It was on, ba on business, on finances, and other, other areas. And uh, what we realized is that we would fill up those trainings to a certain amount, maybe there were 50 or 60 or 100 people in a room, and they were all double their income, triple their income, quadruple their income, but not just the income, they will also double and triple their, their free time, which is so crucial for those small entrepreneurs because otherwise they never see their families, they never have a chance to do anything else. I had no life when I was uh, working as a yes. solopreneur, you know, my life was my work, and I liked it and I enjoyed it, but I had no life except that, uh, until I, I changed something. And uh, what we realized is that our vision as a company is to fulfill, is to, is to help you fulfill your great, greatest potential. But uh, we don't fulfill our greatest potential because if there are, in Holland, there are, at least in, in the Netherlands, there are 350,000 of these entrepreneurs that we can actually help, and we help 50 or 100 every month or every couple of months in a training, that doesn't make any sense. But we realized that when we're charging people the amount of money that will cost them to do a training of three days, full three days with us, we're working from 10 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the evening uh, in those days and everything. And people do get generate tremendous results from that, but it's, it's a lot of money up front for a small entrepreneur. Uh, or I don't know if it's a lot of money as much as it's a lot of risk. It's a, well, it's a lot of commitment a when of they commi don't even have faith in themselves. And they don't have faith in themselves, they, and as a result of that, of course, they don't have faith in us. Yeah, because they don't know. Yeah, they, because they don't know. So we decided to change the, to, the model. To, to, to change the model and to, to say, well, okay, we have a relationship, I want a relationship, you want a relationship also, but I want it more right now, so I'm going to invest in the relationship, Love like it. I believe it's in every relationship. In every relationship, there's always risk, and the risk is for both sides. The question is who's going to take either more risk or who's going to take the risk at the beginning. And at one point we said, listen, we're doing okay, why don't we take the risk? And what we developed, we started to develop a series of programs that will say, all I'm asking you is come and try us out. You know, it, it's still a commitment, it's still an investment, you need to invest a day or a few hours or two days right now the way we do that. And that's time and that's very valuable and I appreciate it and I acknowledge that and I, I tell people all the time, I'm grateful that you're, that sure. you're doing that. But the, at least the financial risk we take on us, we say basically, you don't pay. I mean, we charge people a little bit for the lunches, but basically we say, don't pay, just come and try it out. All I'm asking is to come up with the intention to grow your business because there is so much you don't know. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm joking, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I'm telling people, you know, it's so easy for, it's so easy for me to teach you to double your income. It's because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and it's not to hurt and it's not to, con you know, to condemn people, but 
our target audience never learned and never studied and never cared really about it. Yes. They want to do their thing. They yes. want to do their, expert, their, their expertise. Their, 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 they want to share their knowledge and, and, uh, and passion, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to do the business. And uh, by teaching them the simple, basic startup tools in, in the business bootcamp, for example, which is a very uh, powerful two days, uh, people go out and start flying and yes. they start, I mean, we have quite a lot of people that we don't promise double your income after the business bootcamp, but there's a lot of people that did that within Surely. a few months just because they start to realize all these things that I don't, I didn't know. Now I can do them. We give them the very simple tools. Okay. I'm starting doing, I'm starting seeing results. And when you see results, the positive circles start working. Mm -hmm. And they uh, absolutely agree. And, and so, I mean, one of the things I want to say, and, and my life has been dedicated worldwide to doing, uh, a derivative of what you do with entrepreneurs. And the one thing that somebody said to me early in, and it, 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 it tore my heart out, but it also excited me. They said, most entrepreneurs just unknowingly, undeservingly, and unintentionally limit and restrict and constrain and inhibit the amount of uh, buyers, clients they could be generating, the size of the transactions they could be getting, the number of repeat transactions or the longevity of the relationship, the amount of referrals, the amount of fulfillment, the amount of, of uh, predictable success, not because they're not working hard, but because no one's ever taught them higher performing, more profitable, more predictable, lower risk ways and, and systems that will work for them. And, and that really tore my heart out because an entrepreneur is one of the most passionate, most purposeful of all the kinds of business owners you can ever see. They are the lifeblood of society. And yet most of them achieve 10, 15% of the payoff, the potential, the, the results, the success, the income they deserve. And I think you became very, not just uh, affected and afflicted by that problem, but you, you decided to really tackle it head on. So let's talk a little bit about, without g revealing everything, some of the elements somebody learns just at the boot camp. Let's be a little specific. All right. So actually, we're, our premise is that uh, there are five, there are, you know, let's put it this way. In order to achieve success in every area in life, but we're in the business bootcamp, we talk about business. There are five step system that you need to follow. Um, at least that's how I see it. And I see it for, through, through every, any, any other area of life. And uh, I call the system MGSPI, which is always a funny name for, or a difficult name for, to remember. But it's basically the five steps that we all need to, uh, to focus in order to create success. And for a small entrepreneur that don't know what it is, it's basically, the M starts with the mindset, and that's the first step that needs to happen. And this is something that I, I get from you a lot. You know, I, I, I studied your work, and I, you know, I've, been, you've, I've been mentored by you for a long time. And um, you're talking a lot about strategies and about tactics, but the more I'm getting to know you and the more I, we're having the one-on-one -on -one contact and working on our, I, I can see how the mindset and the mindset shift that entrepreneurs need to, to go through in order to create success, how massive and how important it is. So we're focusing on mindset from the beginning. We said that's the first thing. And the problem with our target audience is that most of them don't have the mindset of entrepreneur because most of them were in the corporate world mm -hmm. and they have the mentality, you know, knowingly, unknowingly, you know, wantingly or not. They, you know, it's basically a mentality of an entrepreneur, you know, getting paid by the hour, which is one of the hardest thing for us to remove from it, for example from people or, or, this, uh, or this responsibility that when you're a business owner, when you're an entrepreneur, you're in responsible for everything. There is no, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm delivering the product or yeah. I'm customer care. Or yeah. I'm, I'm, you, if, if anything goes wrong in the company, it's your responsibility and everything goes right is also, and it's your accountability. So there's quite a few of those, but the mindset shift is the first thing that we need okay. to do. And I cannot say that we're, mind shift, Mindset shift doesn't happen in two days of training, but we start opening your mind to start thinking about the thing. And this, we can see the difference. I mean, just by, by, I think that what most people are getting so excited after the business bootcamp, and they call it an inspiration and training, although it's not, it's not a motivational training, no, it's inspiration, it's a business training. But because they see suddenly that there's so much possibilities that they didn't know about, their mind is open. So mindset is the first thing. Then we're moving to the G in the MGSPI, which is all about goals. And it's, it's really uh, sad and frustrating and sometimes pisses me off in a way how little 
intelligent people, very intelligent people, are either not using goals at all, not setting goals at all. So you ask them, so, you know, what's your plan for your business? Well, you know, I want it to grow. I want to make more money. Mm -hmm. I want more free time. Wh where is the goal? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. And they, they have no clarity whatsoever. Uh, or they have very, clear, very, cl very, uh, very good clarity of the goals, but the goals are in the totally wrong direction. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, if they would go to any other course or to read a book or to any other consultants without having the right goals, they have the wrong goals, and they will give them the best strategy in the world, they will run really fast in the wrong direction. It was fair. And that happens so many times. And with the entrepreneurs that we work, many times the goals are just stuff like, well, I just want to make a decent living. And, or I just want to make as much as I made in my last job which those are the wrong goals for a business, yes. right? So we teach them actually the three different types of goals that they need to set and how to set them and how to get them, et cetera. So goals is a very, very important part of, the, of this training. We actually do it in every training. But you have three training. categories of goals. Yeah, we have three categories for the, uh, for, uh, for the goals. Or let's put it this way. We have four categories for the goals, uh, but we're working with the business bootcamp on three of them um, okay. uh, much more in depth. Uh, and then we say, okay, now that you have the goals and only now you can choose the strategy. Most people are doing it the other way around. I get all the time people saying, well, I want to use social media. That's a strategy, right? Why? Where do you want to go with that? Who is your target audience? If your target audience is people that, don't, that, that are never online, is, is social media would be the right one, et cetera. So people are always hearing, oh, here's the next shiny mm -hmm. thing. This mm -hmm. is a strategy. I should do it. First, let's see the goals that choose which, which strategies to use. In the business bootcamp, we're focusing on three or four strategies for marketing and one important strategy for product development. Those are the only strategies we're focused on. So it's, it's very uh, intense two days about improving your marketing because most of them do either no marketing whatsoever <laughs> or it's or, accidental. Or terrible marketing. Yeah, or terrible or accidental, you know, but there's no strategy behind it. Right. So, so we're, we're covering a few of the, of the most valuable ones, the ones that I find the most uh, rewarding also because they cost you the least or actually they cost you nothing, mm -hmm. but they deliver you the most, uh, either most credibility or the most uh, results, uh, etc. And one strategy that we're focusing on on product development. Only when you have those strategies, now you can create your roadmap, which this is the plan, the, the P in the MGSPI, that's the P part, which this is the plan. And we, at the end of the business bootcamp, here is the plan. It uh, includes those steps. This is what you need to do next week. Next, I don't create that. I recommend that. And you can, you know, as uh, any one of our students will adopt it to their mm -hmm. business and to mm -hmm. their, and to their uh, situation and everything else, but they need to have that plan. And usually entrepreneurs are pretty good in planning. I mean, they love planning, to-do lists and, yeah, uh, sure, and sure. plans and everything. The problem is with the fifth step, which is the I in the MGSPI, which is the implementation, implementation. the follow-through, okay. they're actually doing something with that. And this is something that we're focusing a lot in, in getting that into their mind, how important it is to take action, how important it is to take the right action, how important it is to take the right action in the right timing, preferably as fast as possible. So there is a momentum that starts uh, going on. So those are the main things that we're covering okay. in, a, in more of a you know, helicopter. Yeah, that's good. View. So I want to make a comment. And, and I want to just play back what you said and make uh, a little bit of dimension. I, I've seen massive research, and, and the tragic research says that 95% of all entrepreneurs worldwide, worldwide, never reach their goals. And the reason they don't reach their goals is they really don't have goals. They have hopes and dreams that are abstract. They don't know how to reverse engineer, and they don't really understand what has to happen step by step to make a goal reality, number one. Number two, the ones that do have goals, they normally set far less goals or too high of goals that are either beneath them or above the strategy they're following. I will not argue with you, but I would say that the majority of business owners are not strategic. They just look and grab, grapple and grope for a bunch of tactics. They're episodic, they're intermittent, uh, very, very, very sad. But the worst part about it, and we were talking about this many times this week, the majority of small business owners, whether they're solo or they got six employees, don't realize that they're the ones that have, they have consciously or subconsciously, not unconsciously, because that would be comatose, they have subconsciously or consciously chosen to invest the rest of their life and the previous part of their life in this, in this investment that's called their business. And they're the ones that have the rest of their life to deal with. They're the ones that deserve the maximum yield from that investment. They're the ones that should get the maximum leverage, upside performance, profit. They're the ones that deserve to build an asset that has value at the end. They're the ones that should have that business every day of every week of every month working harder and harder for them than they're working for it. 
but almost none of them do it. And we were talking, the real tragedy is with a little shift in strategy and a big shift in mindset, you can create for yourself a business that grows, that has a team working for you, that has perpetual future, where you know predictably what's gonna come in the future. It's not living hand to mouth, day to day. It's got wealth creation because it's an asset people will buy from you. It gives you all the different kinds of compensation, financial, psychic, short term, long term, predictable. And it seems tragic that anyone who's already decided they're gonna be a business owner, or and that's what a that's what a service provider is. They may not see them, but they're owning a business and it's the rest of their life. And when they stop, if they haven't built an asset that's gonna work for them, it's rather tragic. And you recognize that because we've talked about that recognition all week. And you're you're almost fanatically passionate about not letting them under underperform, underpay, under provide and under fulfill the, what they deserve. I think it's very cool. Um, I wanted to talk about the process because you've got this very, very content rich, integrative way of sort of showing uh, an entrepreneur, small, uh, solo, small, the meaning of business life, the real meaning of business life. And I think it is, it's, it's cathartic, it's catalytic, it's, revelational, it's an epiphany, and I've talked to enough of your students that it, it shook them up. It was, uh, it was startling, stunning, exciting, and, um, and it was a mind, uh, like a mind burst for them because all of a sudden, they seem to have walked out with a clarity and a certainty and a, a, a clear-cut understanding of what they needed to do differently and how they needed to do it and why and what and where. And that's profound when you realize that almost all of those elements are unknown. Most people don't even know they're stuck. Most entrepreneurs, most small ones are stuck in so many ways, marketing, strategy, uh, leverage, uh, message, positioning. They, they don't have any of that and they're just sort of Brutally and 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 and, uh, and 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 you know and, and tenaciously bumping into that wall and bumping again and it just seems so tragic when there's a door right next to it. So let's talk about the process because uh, when I came here here to Netherlands, Holland, Amsterdam, I was fascinated by the process you use and I talked to students and I talked to non-students. I talk to people that don't know a lot about you. And there's a very interesting misconception, I believe, about the process you use and its basis. And we were talking and I told you that in my own reading and my own observation, I have seen that the mechanisms you use, the, 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 the delivery technology, meaning the, for example, medicine gets delivered many ways. It can be delivered in a liquid, it can be a capsule, it can be a time capsule, it can be a tablet, it can be an injection, it can be an intravenous injection, it can be a lot of things. Your delivery mechanism is an integration of many accelerated learning technologies, sciences, methodologies that I believe are being used in many, 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 many traditional industries to uh, provide breakthrough successes, to uh, rehabilitate uh, people's lives, to create uh, clarity when people are depressed, all kinds of different industries, but you've studied and you've come up with an integration that is partially based on helping the senses get re-stimulated, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's more than just the senses. Basically, the, the premise behind it says that when you get lots of information, we, at the end, that's what we're giving. We're, we are basically download, people need to download tons of information. And what happens is that our mind is getting overloaded very, very quickly. The science shows that every seven minutes, you know, you basically, you need a reset. 
some kind of a research. And uh, when you're sitting and, and listening for the lecture, we used to do that. That's how we used to give the trains in the past. So if, if I need pure lecture based, I, if I needed to give you, exactly. If I needed to give you a lot of information, uh, I would try to be as you know as animated as possible, and, and you know allow my voice, my boring voice, to be you know going up and down and everything. But at the end, every seven minutes, there will be too much information going in. And my mind and, just goes uh, vacuous. And then at one point, you're saying, okay, I'm not getting it anymore. And I can see that still for myself. You know, if I'm getting a lot of information, glazed the glazed eyes. Exactly. Okay. So. Uh, the, the system that we, we, we didn't invent it, but the system that we borrowed, developed, uh, improved, adapted, etc., is uh, actually it's a system that was evolved here in Europe, in, in Bulgaria. And the premise behind it says that you need to keep the mind engaged with the information, with the material, with the content uh, all the time, keep it engaged. And you, as soon as you just dump information in a normal way, if it's through lecture or through PowerPoints or whatever it is, then the mind is getting full after a couple of minutes and that's it. And then you need to find a way to reset it. So what we're doing is we 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 we're using a technology that is called accelerated learning, where the mind is being kept engaged all the time in different ways. So for example, every few minutes I will ask a question. By asking a question, you might need to, go to shift to a different gear because so far it was in the receptive uh, mode. Mm -hmm. Now it needs to be in the thinking mode and then in the answering mode. So I can ask a question that uh, the questions are, are not rhetorical questions. They sound rhetorical. They can sound rhetorical, but they will, they, they will actually uh, force you to think. They can be very simple as, as um, uh, is that making sense what I just said? And you need your mind very quickly. You, it, it's, you it will have to stop for a second, you know, calculate and say, yeah, it, well, it makes or sense it or not, right? It, it is or it isn't. Uh, but it might be something else. It, it might be that I will just, uh, I, I will just uh, give you a moment to, st to stop and I say, okay, right now turn to somebody next to you and just tell them what did you get from that last piece of information or for the, from the last exercise, whatever it is. And um, when you do that a lot, when we're, when we're doing it a lot, and in the way that we're doing it, which is very active and very energetic, and we ask people to stand up and share with somebody and then sh share with somebody else, and maybe take the mic and share it with in front, and then I will be able to, to respond to that or relate to that. Uh, this is part of what here in, in the Netherlands, it's been looked as what we call the American system or the mm -hmm. American way. This is the way that, you know, the Tony Robbins of the world are using. It's, 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 it's very high, it's, it's very high energy. Uh, part of it is the sensory, uh, uh, is using the senses, which is again, making sure that the mind has a break from one way of thinking and moving it to the, to the other way of thinking. So from using the, the, the left hemisphere to using the right hemisphere, and we keep on flipping between them. And in order to do that, we need to use all, this, uh, uh, all the senses. For example, uh, this is something else we don't usually teach people or, or explain to people, but I'm, we're not using PowerPoints whatsoever. Okay. Everything we're using is on a small, simple, a flip chart or a, or a flip over. And the reason? And, and the reason is because while if they see this, the, the slide, everything usually is on the slide. So the information is there and then people are, attention is going there and they don't listen They anymore. don't hear what you're saying. While if I'm writing while I'm speaking and at one point I'm hiding, the, don't, we, yeah. we shouldn't tell them all the, yeah, the secrets, but basically if I'm, if I'm standing with my back to the audience, which then is they have to be the engaged. Route, they need to be engaged and they need to get, what does he write, try to write, right? The mind right now is becoming curious. Yes. The, mi the mind is becoming inquisitive. What is he writing? And many times I will write a few words and I will say, and I will turn to them and, says, and I will let them complete that sentence. Because again, the mind is being involved. We're using different colors, for example, all the time because, and people don't get it. Many people are using flip but they use the same color all the yes. time because it's black and it's clear. Yes. No, we're using different colors because the words activate the, uh, the logical part of our brain, but the colors activate the, the creative. And I don't want to get into the whole explanation. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. Yeah, science it. behind it. it. Uh, so this is part of it. We're using a lot of high energy exercise. We're using music. Uh, we're using uh, uh, ways for people to connect and interact with each other. And it's all with one purpose. It's not something that I'm personally enjoying. So, uh, you know, to be very candid and honest about it, when I saw that for the first time it worked, I was like, I'm yeah. not going to do that. Yes, you know, I get I'm it. not going to be part of it. You know, I just came here for the information. Give me the value and, uh, you know, and I'm going home. And what happened is that I started realized that, realizing that by do participating, by do allowing my mind to be engaged, by do, you know, moving out of my comfort zone and trying some, some new stuff, I actually remembered a lot more from the session 
And as a result of remembering something, it came into my, my it system. It took root deeper. And as a result of that, I could implement more. Yes. Before that, I would go for a lecture of one hour, one hour and a half, and I would remember anything that was, uh, that was said after that. I, uh, when I'm using that, people are coming to our courses sometimes for two or full three days, and they get tons of information, but they can use and access so much more of it. And we test them on that, yes. because at the beginning of every day, you're getting to, to review, uh, you need to re uh, review uh, with, your, with a partner or something, all the information that we covered the day before within 10 minutes, and we see how much yes. people remember, how much people later implement. Mm -hmm. So my goal is not, you know, if you like it or not, and I usually tell people, you know, you don't want to, to answer the questions, don't answer them. You know, just for the, these three days, yes. give yourself a chance, yes. see what happens. Because the, the, what, I, what we saw, and we, we, can, we have 18 years of, of comparison, so the first maybe eight, nine years we used the traditional way of Lecture, teaching. Lecture, PowerPoint. Lecture, PowerPoints, uh, the, uh, this kind of exercises. And then we moved it to the, the, to the new system, and we're still evolving it yeah. all the time. But the results of our students just went through the roof. Many of the elements you have incorporated into the process are those very neuroscience research, uh, validated, very, very well documented elements that produce the highest level of comprehension, the highest level of understanding the highest level of retention, and all those are cool, but those have nothing to do with the highest level of execution and achievement. And in the bottom line, that's what people want. And, and the process you use is nothing more than accelerating their ability to perform, their ability to improve results, their ability to shift who they are, what they are, why they are, how they are, and what they accomplish and you know, I always am fascinated because people go, oh, why should I uh, believe in you? And, and, and I probably say that to you all the time. And my response is always, don't. You better believe in yourself more because you're the one that's stuck with this business the rest of your life. If you want to keep doing the same thing the same way in the same uh, process, what do you think is going to happen any different? Are you, in, in, is your income skyrocketing? Is it flat? Is it diminishing? Is your competition going away, is your, is your relevancy improving, or is it, is it static? It couldn't be static, it's either going up or down. And I think the, the real reality that you represent for entrepreneurs, solo, five, 10, is that you have a keen understanding of how to build not just a business where they survive, but a business where they thrive. You've got the ability to help them at whatever level they're at on the continuum to get control, to be in control, to build a system system that keeps working for them and to move themselves to what I call their superpower. If they're an expert at rendering whatever product service they render, it's a tragedy to have to struggle selling it all the time. It's a tragedy having to figure out all the logistics. It's a tragedy having to spend 80% of your time doing activities that are not maximizing either your ability, your impact, your economic reward, or your fulfillment. And you're saying, I agree, Jay, so stop the insanity, give me two days, I'll invest in you, I'll pay for it, judge it not on, on what you know in the past, judge it on how you feel and the knowledge and the shift in business building, understanding, capability, motivation, and, and implementation power you have when you walk out the door. And if, you, if it's a lot, then go do something with it and hope come back and do some more with us. And if not, you know, leave. And you're pretty, you're pretty straightforward about it. Right. So let's talk about a couple. I don't want to do too much, but I want to talk about some of the really impressive success stories. I had the very uh, delightful and um, an impressive fortune of spending a couple hours yesterday with uh, a group of people that have been to your program, the first program, the one you invested in them. They shared with me exactly and specifically how their mind got shifted, the change in thinking and action they went through. I was very grateful. They walked me through some of the the stages that happen in their life, and all of them now are on a trajectory where their business has grown uh, really impressively. A couple of them have grown massively, but they're all positioned now 
to be building something much bigger at bigger levels, but they're not building uh, stress. They are not. They all were smiling and they were effervescent and they looked happy and they looked in control. They were grateful to you, but they looked like men and women who had finally understood how to get control of what they were doing and they finally realized that this is either a drudgerous dead-end job or it's an extraordinary long-term um, asset and a profession really is a business. Absolutely. Service is really a business. Personal service is really a business and you either treat it like a business or you're basically, you've hired yourself to a monotonous job but unfortunately the job description isn't complete because you gotta wear 25 hats and it's a nightmare. You teach people how to stop the insanity. So let's talk about three, four, five interesting uh, success stories or improvements or just really, really impressive people that have come through the process that would be representative of a couple of different types that might be listening and just help them see themselves and maybe where they can relate. All right. So one thing that you said about, uh, you know, about stopping the incentives or starting to realize that they are in a business, this is one of the major lessons that most of our students get during the business bootcamp. Doesn't matter how big their business world. We had people with, we, of course, all of the solopreneurs say the same, but also people with, that had 20 or 20 or 25 people would say the same, that there is some realization that happened to them uh, during the training, and we are pushing it on them to realize that, is that they were actually playing in a hobby and they were not really having a business. They maybe made some money, but their whole mindset they was They were play about acting at business life and didn't even know it. Exactly, and, the, and the, the point about the hobby, at least the way I, I use, usually describe it, what's the difference between a hobby and a business? And then everybody's saying money. I say it's not the money, it's the direction of the money, right? In business, money comes in, in hobby, go, money goes out. And when they say great and analogy, and everybody starts getting it, and, and I'm, I'm going to use that as uh, for, for some of the examples that you said because when they started to take themselves seriously, when they started to take their family seriously, when they started to take their clients seriously, and not just saying, Oh, I'm, I'm it's not that they use it as a hobby, but they never took it seriously enough to invest what they needed for, the, uh, for you know, to make it from a, a hobby to a business, to learn what they need to do, to learn the strategies, to learn the marketing, you know, to learn everything else except their expertise and also even with their expertise, how to take this expertise and package it or give it in the right way for their clients and not for them because most of them came, hey, this is what I know to do, you have to swallow it. You know, and so when we change that, things start, when it's not we, when they change that, but according to what we're taught, that then things started uh, to change. I'll give you an example. Um, we, it's, it, we have a student, he's in retail. It's not, it's not the, our uh, average student, but he's in retail. And he had, for many, many years, he had a shop for uh, suits, for a very high-end suits for, uh, for men. And uh, he's, he has an uh, impeccable uh, sense for style and for fashion. And uh, he, he, used to, he used to advise CEOs and, uh, and top entrepreneurs and presenters on television and everything, and what to wear and everything. And when I wanted to, uh, to uh, he was one of our students for many years, and um, when I s wanted to, to, to start with the first business bootcamp, and I knew that we're going into these big stages with thousands of people and everything, I knew that I need to start looking like a, to dress up properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came to him and I said, listen, I need you to get me some clothes, you know, advise me some clothes. And he said, well, listen, what, what is the image that you want to, uh, to communicate? And I said, I explained the image and I told him, listen, I want to be down to earth and I want to be, this is time for working and everything. So we devised the whole idea of those type of shirts with the, you know, with folding and folding the, and everything, it doesn't matter. And, and then he tells me, all right, and um, it's gonna cost you whatever it is. And uh, I'm gonna send you an invoice. And I took the invoice and I went to my accountant and I said, listen, those are the clothes that I'm wearing only on stage. It's not my normal style. It's not what I'm wearing in the streets or in, for, for in the hanging out. This is for clothes, so I want to be reimbursed from or, or, or deducted from the taxes. He says, you can't at least in Holland, you can't, if I want to get working clothes to be uh, deducted from taxes, they need to have a logo this size on the back <laughs> or something like that, which doesn't work. And I had a suit and everything for our uh, jacket and everything. I suddenly saw he's losing business all the time because his clothes are ex expensive and, uh, and, uh, and you know, if I will, I, I buy it now, but I'm not gonna buy it very often because I cannot get it deducted. So. We started to think about it, and, I, I, and that was the part of the mindset, uh, mind, mindset shift. 
And I told him, listen, what you did with me is you brought me to your shop, you closed the doors, and you talked to me for one and a half hours, tried to find out what I need, what I want, what's my uh, image and everything, and then build it up for me. Why don't you build me for that? And give me the clothes for free, right? So we tried it out, and then he built me the same amount. Instead of on the clothes, he built me on that on image advice, which is totally true. It's, yeah. it's, uh, there's nothing deductible. unethical, whatever it is, but it's 100% deductible. Uh, now suddenly <laughs> the clothes cost me a lot less, and, and uh, he gets the same amount of money. The clothes cost me a lot less, so I'm more inclined to buy from yeah. him. So he made it, he changed it into his business model. He, he, his he closed his shop. It's not anymore a shop. He has a, uh, how is it, he call it? Uh, yeah, consulting okay. practice. Yeah, well, it's a con consulting practice, but he has a name for his, uh, yes. for his shop now. Yeah, yeah. So you cannot come from the street because it's clogged. You yeah. need to make an appointment. You make an appointment, it's usually now it's two to three hours. He sits with you, he advises you. He gives you then at the end, if you're a CEO or a, or a, or a high entrepreneur, whatever it is, he will give you at the end, you know, a list of clothes that you should get, but probably worth between five to 10,000 euros but he builds you only on the, on the consulting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a mind shift, and as a result of that, his business grew uh, 10 times in one year. That's incredible, ten I love times. that. So a thousand percent. That's so this a great is a good first story. story. So this is a, this is a good story of, a, of an entrepreneur that did uh, that. It's you know, a fabulous that. story. Uh, let's uh, think of, a, of another story. Of yeah, something that's gonna be so simple, and, and the mind shift is gonna make somebody just see, wow, okay. I can, I can sell this way or I can position this way or because a lot of the people aren't going to be ready for that. I love that. That's the kind of thing I do. And I'm, I'm smiling like the Cheshire cat who swallowed a canary. But, but give us another example. Okay, another example. So we had a woman and, uh, and uh, she said, my problem is to position myself uh, or to differentiate myself from everybody else. Everybody else is doing the same. She was a translator. And she says, everybody's doing the same. It's even worse than that because today there's all this software and most of the translators will use today a software to translate it and then they will just go and clean it up. But the quality of this translation is much lower than the quality of the translation that I'm doing, uh, which is basically you know, reading every single word and translating and everything. But it's, it's a cutthroat business. The there's tons of competition. There is nothing that, specialize, uh, that, that I can specialize in in order to, uh, in order to uh, differentiate myself, etc. And uh, I told her, uh, that's interesting because you've been with us for a lot, through a lot of trainings and your understanding of marketing today is way higher than the understanding of your clients of marketing. So why don't you say to them that the next time that they come to you and they say, well, we need those pages of the, of the website to be translated either from Dutch to English or from English to Dutch, why can't you uh, um, I, um, take a look at the website and add the text that they have right now in the original language and give them critique of the quality of the copywriting? You know, you're a good writer, you understand marketing. Tell them, is it working, is it not working? And then tell them, listen, I can do the tr translating, that's gonna cost you this, but I can do for you the translating after I will improve this text. So you're gonna get, in both languages, you're gonna give it the text to work for you much better as a result of that. And uh, she got the idea, I mean, that was just the, uh, the little input that I gave, but she made a big thing out of it, and now, right now, she's getting paid, basically, for marketing work, and then translation is, a, is an extra service that she's giving, but she can charge them as much as she wants. It's very cool. As much as she wants. We had a similar example with a transcriber that uh, she says, well, the price for transcribing is X amount of, e of cents per word, and that's what, every, or sorry, per minute transcribing. And uh, everybody charges the same amount. I cannot charge anything more than that. So what we did, and what she did as a result, as a change, she just said, I'm not going to give you a verbatim transcri transcription of one word by word, and then we say, uh, well, then Jay said this, and then Isanda mm -hmm. said this, and, you know, and, and all the, she would make it into a text that is ready for a book, or an e-book, or, a, or, a, or an article, or whatever it is. She will already do the editing part also, mm -hmm. and, and she, what she does in her marketing right now, when people are asking her, so, you know, how much she charges, and, or what does she do, she's telling them what she charges, which is twice than everybody else, but she sends them an example of, an, of, a, of a text that she gave to a, to a normal transcriber to transcribe and she and this is how so she's, fabulous, doing, and she's just putting them so she value and, adds and it so much that's and perfect. her business is just exploding and, and so I'm gonna interpret because we've had a lot of private discussion thinking differently about yourself your value proposition the market you serve how you reach the market the message you make the process you use all of those are shifted challenged uh, explained and re uh, constituted and connected in your basic two-day boot camp, which you invest, basically, you buy for them. Mm -hmm. And then when they're done, they either are a transformed entrepreneur or 
or they're not. If they aren't, then they still, had, they still had an interesting weekend and a great lunch or two, and they go off about their way and they continue digging themselves a hole in the wrong place. If they like what you do and what you teach and it shifts their mind, they make changes. You've got exceptional advanced programs, but your whole model, which I love, is we don't deserve your compensated um, uh, uh, patronage until we first Proofs. helped you profit at our investment. And I think that's a wonderful place. So let's talk about who's probably best for experiencing and embracing and accepting and who probably should continue bumping into walls and, and experiencing mediocrity because they wouldn't appreciate. Who's going to appreciate it the most? Okay, the people that will appreciate the most probably will be the f first will be the people that wants to see growth. The, we are looking for the ambitious people. Not the, I have, we have a certain amount of people that come and they say, well, you know, why should I make more money? I need just a little <laughs> bit more, you know, in order to cover the, the rent or cover the, 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 you know, food on the table. But I don't want to grow a lot. I don't want to work more. I don't want to, uh, to make a lot more money. I just want a little bit. And this is, you're going to be disappointed. You know, a person like that will going to be disappointed because we are going to talk about ambition. And I am going to confront every single person. I'm, I'm, I'm very animated about that, that, that. If somebody comes and says, well, I don't need more than that, I will confront them because it's not just about them. It's not even just about their family. It's about their clients because if you're in your potential, can help a, a, a thousand people, a thousand, I don't care what, a thousand people with their back pain or a thousand people with their relationship or a thousand people to stop smoking or a thousand people with their website and you're helping 10 just because this is enough for you to make a living, then you're ripping off not just yourself and your family, you're ripping off 990 other people and I do not accept that and this will be the end of our relationship. If you will come to the business bootcamp and after yeah. two days you will say I'm still there, I would say thank you very much and goodbye because this is not interesting you can't, for us. You can't add value to them and they don't want I, and I, I don't want to, I, don't, I don't even want to. I want to work with those people that will help us make a difference, a difference in the world. So the ambition needs to be there. We have a lot of students that are coming and they say I'm a solopreneur and I want to stay this way. And it's, a, it's very religious here in Holland. So uh, for those type of people, uh, it's, they are very religious about it. So the, even the name in Dutch is ZZ Payer, which means uh, independent without employees. So the without employees is the part in their, mm -hmm. uh, in their religion. And through the two days, I'm trying to get them not to accept the, fa the, the fact that they need employees, but the fact that they will need, in order to grow, they will need a team. Yes. And, and it doesn't really matter if there are employees. It doesn't have to be an internal team. It can be any other team, but alone, there is only, there's, that, there's uh, this is how much you can get alone. When you're having a team or you have a support, whatever, you can reach a lot more. We want to be part of your team, if you choose for us, but it's not just us. It's anybody else that can support you in any way, shape, or form. Um, but you cannot do it alone. And, those, uh, and if a person after the two days say, well, I'm still want, this is what I want at the end of my life, well, you know, until the end of the, my life, then that's okay, but you're not for us. I mean, just as a small example, we had this, uh, it's really not a very typical example, but um, this is a woman, and uh, she was a massage therapist. You know, she's giving massages. And she said, your ideas are great, and I accept them, but it's not for me, because I need to give those massages. I can charge more money for that, and if I will become really good, I can charge two or four times than anybody else, but that's the maximum I can get. There is a limit, or there's a ceiling to my growth. And I said, I disagree. I disagree. It's somewhere in your mind that you decide that you're the one that needs to do everything, including the service itself, including the product in your credit, but you can change that. And she was fighting me for two days. Okay. Actually, she left at the end, still fighting, still don't agree. But I'm seeing her six months later in the street at one point in Amsterdam, and she's, uh, I'm asking her, so how are you? She said, you won't believe where my business is. Because she got the point, and she decided that instead of her giving all the massages, she can uh, hire other people, especially the chair massages that are short. Yes. And what she's doing, she developed a business which is working till today for five or six years. I meet her sometimes because we are rock climbing together, and her business is still flour flourishing. And she's having a, a on co she's she's actually doing the sales into companies, and uh, she's coming to companies and says, "Listen, I can bring uh, X amount of a massage therapist during lunch break over an hour, an hour and a half, and we will massage that's brilliant you know, a certain amount." And she has hundreds of massages in uh, on call, and she just says, "Okay, you know, Philips needs now a uh, hundred massages for this one and a half hours," and she just send them. Mm -hmm. Now I, I I believe that she still does massage sometimes for fun, but this is then it's become the hobby, yeah. but the business is not that. So this is, a, this is an example of somebody yes. that got the point and started to make a difference, which we have uh, the, 
we have a, a very large population of I, ICTers or yes. I, uh, people from the I, from the IT industry, mm -hmm. and uh, those are usually the ones that already have more than one person. They already have a few employees. They really they realize that they are technical people. They are uh, they have no clue about marketing. They yes. don't want to know anything about it. They have difficult. They, I mean, when they will get into one on one with the client with a prospect, they will usually be able maybe to close the deal if they are having the right uh, communication. But the marketing to the mo to more people in order to get the leads is difficult to impossible for them. Many times they're introverts, yes. which is makes, makes life <coughs> even Absolutely. more difficult. So we need to, to show them that actually it's not so difficult and it's not so scary to actually, you know, open up and, and start talking marketing and start uh, approach, approaching more people. And the results are tremendous. And the results are tremendous. We have lots and lots of uh, people in the consulting industry. So in any, any kind from consulting from very high end to low end <coughs> to a consumer or to businesses. And uh, those are people that it's very easy for us to help yes. because our model works perfectly for them. All they need to do is to just model everything that we teach them and immediately they will see the result. Their problem usually is, again, the same story is that if they're the one that also is going yes. to deliver the sure. product all the time, then, uh, then th that's going to limit their growth. But what we show them is how they can for sure increase their, uh, the volume of their, uh, of their uh, you know, getting better, more client, getting better client, getting bet paid better, a lot better, if they change their positioning, if they change, the, if they differentiate themselves in different things, if they build up an expert yeah. position. The value problem. So, yeah, the f the, 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 and the perceived value of what they have. So those are the, those are the people that are benefiting the most. Who's gonna, who, who, who don't come, not only will you fight it, you, your mind is gonna be too, calcified and rigid and you're going to be destined to whatever outcome you've chosen for yourself and we can't help you and you would be wasting, it'd be good lunch, you'd probably like the, the meal, but you'd be wasting the opportunity cost and you should give the seat to somebody else. Who would that be? Well, first of all, the main thing, and that's hard for us to judge in advance, I wish I could qualify the people in advance for that, but people that are not willing to open up for something new uh, because everything that we'll teach, I mean, uh, people tend to think that uh, that business, especially people that were in the in the corporate world, they look at their boss and they say, well, he's an idiot or she's an idiot, and they're making so much money on my expertise, then I can do that, you know, myself, and I will do it because it's just common sense. This word, it's just common sense, or business is just common sense, is a very... I, I find it, it's a very, very dangerous word yeah, well because stated. actually business is, n successful business is not common sense, it's actually uncommon sense. It's a lot of things that you need to do. If, if the majority of the people are doing something, you better do this, uh, the, the, opposite. the opposite. I mean, one of the things that people are criticizing us, but the fact is that it's successful like crazy, is because everybody in Holland, when they give a discount or we want to give you a deal, they will give you a 3% discount. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. The a major discount might be, or a major deal would be, you know, you get a 7% discount. I'm saying no, if you will do something for me, I will cut the prices easily 50% if you will do, if you will do what you need to do, for example. And uh, for people, it's very, very difficult to accept that, that to do things in a different way. When we're telling people, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, or we, we the other way around, you know, we tell people, you know, your prices are too low. Yeah, yeah. And they say, well, yeah, they say, well, you know, I'm charging around the, the average. I'm saying this is wrong because when you charge twice or three times the prices and you're not anymore in comparison with anybody else, you compare, you're compared to yourself or to something which is yeah. much higher. Uh, but if I will double my, my, my price, I will <laughs> so you still make more money. And I'm saying, I'm saying, okay, let's do the calculation for a second. Because they don't. I say, let's so say that you, let's say that you're right. I don't believe it's true. And research but shows again and again the that same place not. with twice the time. Exactly. So you're making twice, uh, twice the money. You are having, you're, you're having uh, half the, uh, half the clients. So at the end, the bottom line stays the same, right? Exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. But what happened to your free time, which is an issue yeah. for people, for the first thing? It's just double. So if you're not, if, if, as a, if, if you're coming just because you're curious mm -hmm. or just because somebody told you you have to be there, yeah. but you're not open to do, yeah. to, to listen to something new and to try something new, you, there's no point because we will show you ways that makes, uh, that are opposite to what you learned before, to opposite what, to what you were conditioned to, and we will ask you to actually give it a try. Yeah. You don't have to. I yeah, don't know if you do yeah, that sure. or not, but if you want to see yeah. results, you'll have to give it a try. And most people, uh, no, not most people, it's, but some people are so stuck in their, sure. in their, in their, I don't know if it's their ego or if it's their, uh, their ways or if it's proving that they were doing the right thing, although it doesn't support them so far. I mean, it's amazing how many people are coming, the business is not doing so well, but they will fight me on that, you know, that this is how we always did things. Got yeah, it. and those are the results you got. What's the point? Yeah. So the openness, I think it's a, it's a major thing. 
I think that if you're not yet decided if you want to have a business or not, there is no point. You're not ready. Yes. We, we, we used to have people that are coming just because, oh, let's see if, what, mm -hmm. if I will get from that some ideas. Mm -hmm. We're very focused right now on businesses that are actually in working. How do you increase the number of clients? How you keep clients came back, uh, coming back again? How do you get clients to pay more? Uh, you know, all the ways and to and grow your business. And creating new services and products as well. And, and so it's really no point for somebody that doesn't have a business. It's, it's really not, not, uh, not really supporting that. Uh, another thing is that if you have aversion to success, to growth, or to, uh, or to generate money, although our focus is not necessarily on the money, the money is an, a result it's of a you reward, making, yeah, you sure. deliver more value, you create yes. more contribution, but if you're not willing to grow in all areas of business and personal, then again, it's, you're, you're going to be so frustrated and I will be very frustrated. And when I'm frustrated, you know what no, no, I've, I've been there. So I want to say a couple of things because I think you did a, an exceptional job. Number one, and, and I've traveled the world observing this, there's a, 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 an amazing amount of people that never really step away from their mind and think what they're doing. But if they've been following a process, I want to say a strategy, but it's really not, it's tactics. If you've been following tactics and those tactics have not delivered the kind of vision or the kind of income or the kind of respect or the kind of fulfillment or the kind of earnings or the kind of satisfaction you're after, what in the world makes you think that continuing doing it that way can possibly create anything other than what you have right now? So if that is true, it means, duh, you have to explore, you have to examine, you have to consider, you have to open your mind to alternative ways of thinking. Thinking differently is normally the path to growth, to greatness, to prosperity, but if you can't do it, you can't do it. Now, uh, you, you've been very, very, I think generous, not just in funding and investing in the two-day event, but you also don't even want them to commit to taking advantage of that unless they're at least clear that it holds potential value for not just them, but who they are and what they may want that they've never gotten clear on. So you've created for them a self-assessment where they can take a, a certain number of, of questions and they can basically see where they stand and get an insight privately without ever having to talk to anybody. You've got really great, great um, uh, introductory materials that they can, they can request. You, uh, you don't do these often enough, so when you do them, if they're, if they're ripe, receptive, and ready, it probably makes sense for them to contact you and your at your, at your company, they should probably review some of your materials because I think it'll excite and it'll, it'll liberate their sense of possibility and animate their, their sense of what they can be in the future. But what do they do if they see in this discussion in, intriguing, appealing, and, and uh, content messages that really resonate with them and they want to at least move themselves forward. And the next level would be trying to connect and understand how to maybe participate in the two day. What would they do? Well, if they want, if they already made the decision, uh, if anyone already made the decision that they want to join the business bootcamp, which is very, very, again, low risk. I'm not saying low commitment. We actually do ask for a commitment. And that's why we, we created this full two days. And we ask people, if you join, then join for the full two days. Yeah. Uh, because that's important for them to get the maximum, for me to make sure that I'm delivering the maximum. So that's very easy. You just go to our, uh, to our uh, website and just look at the practicalities and register. But you're right, we've created, we've created for those people that are not sure yet, is that the right thing for me? Do I want to spend or to invest those two days with, uh, with Open Circles or with Miss Sunday? Is that the right thing for me? I heard all this stuff around, you know, it's American and a lot of people and everything. Is that the right thing for me? So first of all, browse around. I mean, we have this, we have so much material online that you can, you don't need to come to a train with us forever if you want. You know, material is this from, from tons and tons of articles. We have hundreds of articles on every single topic in your business that you can imagine. We have uh, tons of videos that are there. We have lots and lots of uh, 
free reports and uh, free video courses that you can uh, download and, uh, and just benefit from them. And I suggest you do. And I suggest you do. We also created this, uh, this very powerful assessment, which is actually a kind of a, it's a tool for both of us. It's a tool for uh, a pro uh, somebody that thinks about it. Is that the right thing for me? And for them to evaluate themselves, it's a very powerful self-evaluation. Actually, it can be very, very confronting because I'm going to ask you, there are quite a few questions that will ask you to look at places in your business or places in yourself that maybe you didn't, uh, you never looked before. And it's good to do that. It's good to do that if you will choose that, uh, you know, if you will choose to do something with us or not, it's, it's good to be aware. You'll be, you'll be true to yourself. You know who you are and who you're not. Exactly. And we, so many of our entrepreneurs uh, have no awareness. Uh, again, not because they are stupid or because they are ignorant, but because they never learned and they never learned what, where to look. So they don't know what they don't know, right? So this is bringing up lights for, uh, for those areas. But it also gives us a lot of information. And by, by us analyzing this, uh, the results of this survey or this questionnaire and sending it back to you, you can know if we can support you, but we also know that we can support you because I would like to support the, mo the people that, that we have something to deliver to them. And the rest, you know. Yeah, the right people there for the right reason. I love that. Um, I, I think I've covered everything we want, but I would like to conclude this with uh, three more elements. The first is I've tried to ask you what I thought were really good questions to be the advocate of the, of the viewer, but I can't possibly ask every pertinent question, and since I've only had the privilege of observing you, your attendees, your team, the market, your purpose, uh, which is a lot. I, I don't know what all goes on in your mind and what all goes on with your, your people. What questions should I have asked you that I didn't? And had I asked that, what's your answer? All right, what question should you have asked me? Um, yeah, I think that one of the questions that I would have liked to answer, or I think it's important for, for, for uh, somebody that doesn't know us very well uh, to know is uh, what's, what's actually my or our motivation to help these specific uh, people. Okay, great question. And, and where, where do we want them to go? And um, I mean, there's a lot of places and there's a lot of organizations, there's a lot of tools and strategies that people can learn in order to grow their business. I mean, we're not the only one in the world. Uh, I, I guess that we're not even the only one in Holland. I, I hope and I guess that we are the best, I, but there are more. And we're doing it our own very peculiar way, which you know can turn off some people and that's totally fine. Uh, but what I think is unique with us is first of all, where we're coming from, which I was saying in a moment, uh, what motivates us, me in that case, uh, to develop the, that work and to work with these specific people and where I want to take them, which is, I don't know anybody else that is doing it, by the way, in the world. So uh, first of all, I'm, what is pretty unique about us is that we're coming from our own experience. We never, uh, yeah, we never, uh, you know, people say walk your talk, you know, or teach what, you know, we are, uh, we are basically teaching what we do and how we live, which is kind of strange sometimes because I might be very enthusiastically teaching you in a certain year in the business bootcamp four years ago. I was very enthusiastically teaching you how Twitter, how important Twitter is for your business because at that time we got 12% of our clients through Twitter and that was a major amount of, yeah, a, of a, or part, of our part, part of our business. But years later, realizing that there are better tools, more, more uh, successful, then today I'm saying, you know, forget about Twitter. Uh, so that is much better. Yeah. And people sometimes are kind of like, hey, but you said that and now you're saying the opposite. And I say, yes, because I'm teaching you exactly how we're doing. I had several businesses, quite a few businesses in five different industries in three continents not like you, I mean, you were having 40, 465 uh, industries. I only worked in five different, uh, but I had my own business yes. in five different industries, in three different continents, uh, eight different businesses, and I have a little bit of perspective, just a little bit with this target audience that we have. And, um, and I want to share what works, and I want to share what doesn't work in order to tell you this and it doesn't work, and that can change. Yeah. So I don't know a lot of, a lot of uh, a successful uh, trainers, teachers, at least not in, in the Netherlands, that are actually coming from their own experience and can share that and can show that. Because we can show their success that we have in everything, in the number of people in the room, mm -hmm. in, the, in the number of, uh, uh, in the, the amount of traffic to the website, in the number of comments to our website, to our blog post, to the, the number of viewers for our, for our uh, you know, YouTube videos, whatever it is, whatever I'm teaching, yes. I can prove. You can prove that that's that's real. That, that, and, that, you that's real. and you're doing it too. 
Yeah, and we're doing it, we're very transparent about that. So that's very, very easy. So that's where we come from. And by the way, when I'm teaching people how to write a book in 28 days, it's because I wrote all my books in less than 28 days, and because my students, when they apply, they Do write the, the same book, thing. The, the same thing. So I will. Uh, I cannot let another trainer do that because if they don't have a book that they wrote in 28 days, that doesn't fit. So that's how our model works. Um, the reason why we, and you mentioned that at the beginning from your point of view, but my point of view is also is very similar about it. I believe that the small entrepreneurs is the lifeblood of, of, of the economy and to society, and it's the future. It's the future is not in the big corporation, not that they will disappear, but innovation comes from the small uh, companies. Yes. I think most of the employment is coming from the small businesses today. Uh, they are much more uh, able and, and, and eager and passionate to make a difference and to change and not to, to stay stale yes. like, the, like the big corporation. And I see so much talent, so much passion, so much knowledge, so much expertise in the people that we work with, which is such a shame that they keep themselves small. I can't take it and I'm, I will do whatever it's in my power and that's what I'm doing. I really don't need to do that. I could do anything else I wanted. I could, we worked this corporation in the past. We worked business to business all the time and, and it was better money, easier money, and I wouldn't do that because they don't make the same difference. And that is passion. And 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 I, there, there's something wonderful and it's even uh, multiplied when you, when you liberate their understanding of how much more is possible. Yeah. Great, I love that. So now I'm gonna say two things in their quotes, and then we're done. And uh, but I'll have you give your website and make sure everybody knows what to do in, in case they watch this on some YouTube or whatever they do. So uh, I, there's been a lot of people influence me in my life, and there's a couple quotes that they seem to haunt me. They always come back and they seem to be appropriate here. One of them is uh, from a man in, in, um, in Toronto that I, I, I really like, and he, he, he is a very profound thinker, and he says, most entrepreneurs struggle all their life silently tormented by the wrong question. The question that they struggle with is, am I worthy of this goal? Can I really make a living in my service business? Can I really... Uh, grow and thrive and support my family and my coaching business? Can I really uh, fill all my hours in my ITC or my ICT business? And he said, that's absolutely, positively the wrong question to ask. When you realize how much more is possible from a day, from, from uh, an activity, from an effort, from communication, from marketing, from selling, from interacting, from controlling the power and the force of marketing strategy, uh, repositioning, shifting the business model, you start asking a totally different and the correct question. And the, quest the question you should be asking is the goal worthy of me because I can do so much more with myself, with my expertise, with my opportunity, with my understanding. The other one is a great quote from one of the, uh, the uh, iconic advertising uh, legends of all time, Leo Burnett. He said, if you set your sights on the moon and the stars, one thing is certain you will never come up with a handful of mud. And that's it, so how do they reach you if they happen to be watching this and it's not on your website? So if, uh, if, they're, if, if you look into the English website, that's www.opencircles.com, and for the Dutch website, that's www.opencircles.nl. Okay, and I've enjoyed it, and I think it's been uh, actually a, a, a quite profound interview, and hopefully it's given Clarity, understanding, dimension, and um, and uh, really foundation to who you are, what your organization is all about, why you're here, what you do, how you do it, why some people don't understand the method to your madness, and uh, and perhaps it, it it's opened a path to prosperity or greater potential for a lot of people that have never really. Uh, wrecking how much more they really want growth or success. Thank you, and I believe this has probably done a lot to help people who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, coaches, consultants, trainers, if not just reflect, hopefully uh, 
do a reality check for themselves on what they really want from their profession, from their skill, from their expertise, from the rest of the life. Because as I said earlier, we're not the ones that have chosen that that path. We're not the ones that have to live with it. We're not the ones that have the next five or 10 or 20 years that they'll have to do it. It seems like if they're committed to themselves, they should be committed to wanting everything possible for it, from it, through it, and for, in terms of fulfillment, financial, and at the end, a great asset, but having the greatest life because they're in control of it. And in control means so much more than most of them allow now. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Jay, and it was wonderful just to reflect and just to have you questioning me, just bring up those answers. I realized how much better I can become when I'm communicating, actually, and how clearer I can become. So thank you for- uh, It was a pleasure. Wonderful.